Hey everybody, this is Mrs. Hilt with your lecture on atomic theory, atoms, ions, and isotopes. Please follow along with the lecture slides. You will definitely want to reference these notes later. And also have a periodic table available. If you don't have a hard copy at home, just Googling one to use is perfectly fine. All right, so an atom. An atom is the smallest particle of an element, and they are comprised of three subatomic particles called protons, electrons, and neutrons. So what we need to know for this class is the mass of the subatomic particles as well as their charge and where they live in the nucleus. Sometimes when you look all this information up, you get a lot of extra information, and that is good information, don't get me wrong, but for this class where we are starting off in chemistry, we don't need to know all of that just yet. What you need to know is coming up on the next few slides. So first, we need to know the mass of the subatomic particles. And protons and neutrons have approximately the same mass of one AMU or one atomic mass unit. Electrons are so tiny, their mass is that of a proton. So we consider them to have zero AMUs, or they are essentially weightless or have no mass. Let's see if you guys are paying attention. All right, we know the mass. Now we need to know the charge. Protons and electrons have opposite charges. Protons are positive, electrons are negative, and neutrons are neutral. So they sound, and those two things sound the same, spelled same, neutrons, neutral. All right, we got the charge, we got the mass. Now where they live. So protons and neutrons are located inside the nucleus. And in this picture, they are the blue and green dots right in the center. Electrons are found in the space outside the nucleus. So those little yellow dots that are flying around on those red rings, those are the electrons. And the atom is actually made up of mostly empty space. And you can see that by looking at all of the head empty space in between where the electrons are flying around and where the nucle nucleus is in the center. All right, quick recap and one new thing on the proton. So the mass is one AMU, the charge is plus one, and the home is inside the nucleus. And how we figure out the number of protons that an atom has is by finding its atomic number. We find the atomic number by looking at the periodic table. And when you guys look at your periodic tables, you will see uh, element symbols just like this, where the element has a chemical symbol, either one or two letters, and it will also have an atomic number. Now the atomic number defines the element because the atomic number is the exact same thing or exact same number as the number of protons. Okay, so if you were to change the number of protons, you change the element. Or if you change the element, you change the number of protons. All right, on to neutrons. Again, a recap. The mass of a neutron is 1 AMU. The charge is 0, and the home is in the nucleus. And we can figure out the number of neutrons in an atom by taking the atomic mass and subtracting it by the atomic number. So the total mass minus the number of protons. Okay. And when you look at the periodic table, there are a lot of different average atomic masses shown. And we are going to have a whole other lecture on average atomic masses. What I'm talking right now is the mass number of an individual atom and this is going to be a whole number. We find this by taking the number of protons and adding it to the number of neutrons, because these are the two subatomic particles that have mass. Okay. And if you are ever given the mass number and the number of protons, which is the same as the atomic number, you can find the number of neutrons by plugging it into this equation.
All right, now we need to know how to figure out the number of neutrons and the mass number because of isotopes. So what an isotope is, is an atom that has the same, or it's the same element, but it has different numbers of neutrons, or different amounts of neutrons. And when we have different amounts of neutrons, because they have mass, the overall mass is different for that isotope. So isotopes are elements with different masses because they have different numbers of neutrons. Isotopes can be represented in three different ways. One way is shown right here. It's called isotope notation. X is your chemical symbol. A is the mass number, which we find by taking protons plus the neutrons. Z is the atomic number, which is the same as the number of protons and the charge will go up here. There might not always be a charge to write in for an isotope. Two other ways to write the isotope notation is by writing out the name of the element, the hyphen, and the mass number, or you can use the atomic or chemical symbol, hyphen, and mass number. Let's get a little practice with those. So I'm gonna walk through all of these examples for you. If you want to pause the video and write down these examples, go right ahead and press play when you're ready for the answers. All right, so if I am given the atomic number, neutrons, and charge, this is what I'm going to do. So first step is looking up the element with atomic number 17 on the periodic table. I would find the chemical symbol Cl. Then I write the atomic number right here, and I need to write the mass right there. How I find the mass is by taking the number of protons and adding it to the number of neutrons. And the charge, we have a charge of zero. I could write it right here, but because there's no charge, that's not really necessary. All right, next one. Atomic number, 92. Again, look at my periodic table and find that the chemical symbol is U. Then, atomic number goes right here. And the mass is already calculated for me, so I don't need to add the protons and neutrons. It's already done here for me. Now, I am given the number of electrons. And because I know that my number of protons is 92, if I have 86 electrons, I can tell that I'm going to have a charged atom or an ion as well as an isotope. So to find what the charge would be, I'm going to take the number of protons, subtract it from the number of electrons. And because I have more positives than I do negatives, I'm going to end up with a positive six charge. And I'm going to write that in just like that. All right, last example. Mass number 113, protons 48, charge is negative 1. So I'm actually not told the atomic number. Or am I? I am technically because remember that the atomic number and the number of protons are the same thing. So I need to look up what element number 48 is. And the symbol that goes with 48 is CD. I'm going to write the atomic number right here, mass number right here, and the charge right there. There we go. If you'd like to write this down, pause the video, do so, and when you're ready for more, press play. All right, recap on the electron. So we already know the review is that we have that they have one or zero AMUs as the mass, charge of negative one, and they live outside of the nucleus. So all those negatives around the nucleus. And we just did this on the last slide with the isotope examples, but we can find the number of electrons by taking the atomic number and adding the charge. So the number of protons plus the charge. 
Now we need to know how to figure out the number of electrons and the charge because when we have uneven amounts of protons and electrons in an atom, they become ions, which ions are just charged atoms. When there are more protons or more positives than negative electrons, atoms become cations or positive ions. When there are more negatives or more electrons than protons, we have negative ions, which are anions. And if there is an equal number of protons and electrons, the charge is zero and it is just called an atom. So you can use the wording to help you figure out if it is going to be a charged atom or an ion by it saying ion, or if it is an atom, it is not going to have a charge and will have equals no, equal number of protons and electrons. And we can find the charge by taking the protons and subtracting the electrons, just like we did for that isotope notation. All right, now, why do atoms form ions? So this is all to do with bonding. And atoms can gain or lose electrons. When they do, they form those ions. And in, uh, after that, they will form ionic bonds. Other atoms who don't gain or lose electrons are called or end up forming covalent bonds, and they share their electrons. Why this all happens and how we figure out which atoms gain or lose electrons is all based on where atoms are located on the periodic table. And more information will be coming up with that in later lectures. Okay, we have a couple of examples for you guys. I want you to pause the video and try these ones out on your own first. When you're ready for the answers or to check your own, press play. All right, here we go. Please go ahead and check your answers. Uh, pause the video to do so, and when you're ready for more, press play. All right, now I want you guys to try filling out this table and use this table as well as a periodic table to help you fill it in. Okay, so for the first one, element symbol of arsenic, you can look over here to help you figure that out. And you can also use the atomic number, mass, and charge to fill in everything. All right, again, give this a try. Pause the video. When you're ready for the answers, press play. All right, here we go. Please check your answers, and if you have any questions, please let me know. Thanks for watching.